the Lord Church. Praise the Lord again. I'm very happy again to invite you to this wonderful Sunday service and I hope you will be blessed. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have a reason to thank you, to bless you for this wonderful moment you have made for us to gather together in your name to glorify you, to worship you, to exalt you, to praise you, even to seek your ways. I thank you for each one of us, together with our families, even for the way you have kept us alive to see this time, so that we can continue seeking your ways. My humble prayer is that you be with us, by your spirit, guide us in every session, and in the end, unite us again by your spirit, and uh, let your name be glorified. I pray that you shall intervene in every place, every viewer is sitting, watching the program, that there will be no interruption of whatever kind, but everything will go well. Pray for the blood of Jesus to wash us, to cleanse wherever we are, our environment, and make us acceptable before the Lord. I thank you, I bless you, for in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So welcome to this service, you are so special. Jesus loves you, we love you, and we know God will do mighty things in this service. We have to thank God for what he is doing and what he will do as we continue uh, being in his presence. So having said that, I want all together to go to the Bible. We read Romans chapter 12, the whole of it, and then we pray according to how the Lord will lead us. Romans chapter 12, the book of Romans, chapter 12, we can read all together. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 3, For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Verse 4, For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. Verse 5, so we being many are one in body, one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Verse 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in promotion, proportion to our faith. Verse 7, or ministry, let us use it use it in our ministering, he who teaches in teaching. Eight, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with the cheerfulness. Verse nine, let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Verse 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another. 11, not lacking, lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. 13, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. 
14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. 16. Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. 17. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. 18. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peace, peaceably with all men. 18. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Visions is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. 20. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink, for in so doing you will heap coals of fire on his head. 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Praise the Lord. Let God bless his word. This is our word of encouragement for you and me as we begin this service. This general principles in the kingdom of God. The first one is that we need to have Jesus as our Lord in everything we do so that all these things we can practice. Also, the second point I got is that we need to yield to the process, to the power of the Holy Spirit to bring transformation in our lives. We need to also to serve God with a measure of gift that he has given each one of us, not competing, not uh, strive, not uh, walking in disharmony, and many other things. We need to show Christian unity, Christian love, and we need to mend our relationship. We need to always make sure we love brethren, we pray for them, we love our enemies, and so forth. So we want to thank the Lord for having helped us through this word to remind us uh, how we need to behave as a family of God. Can we uh, give a prayer of thanksgiving? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you love us and you have helped us to remind us the general principles in the kingdom of God to bring harmony, to bring love, to bring unity, to see uh, as being effective in your kingdom, serving without any string, any condition, and we thank you because you are ministering to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us pray, God, to have mercy again, where we have failed to live according to these principles. God, to forgive us and help us by his spirit to act on each one of them. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you to ask you to show mercy upon our lives. Show mercy, Lord. We have sinned against you in not obeying every principle in your word. Forgive us, help us by your spirit so that, oh Lord, we may act on these things and see victory in our lives and your kingdom will be expanded. We thank you, we bless you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we want to welcome the Holy Spirit again in the, as we continue to be in this service. Bring expectations to the Holy Spirit. Bring your challenges. Bring your fears. Bring every issue. Tell God in this service, I am expecting to, you to touch me in a unique way. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we welcome you, your spirit, to reign in this service again in our hearts. 
We have ha ha come into this service. Our hearts are burdened with what is happening in our lives, in our families, in our places of work, in our business, in our jobs, in the church, in the nation, in our environment, bad experiences, bad things that have happened. We bring all these burdens to you. Holy Spirit, we know you are so faithful. Prevail over these burdens. Prevail over every issue. Reign, we submit to you. We surrender totally to you. Take over our hearts. Take over our minds. Take over everything. We lay every burden to you, every heavy weight to you that you may take. We want to be light. We want to take your burden, which is light, so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. So prevail. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we thank God because the spirit has entered your life. You have emptied everything. Now you are at liberty to give worship to him, to give praise. So having done that, it is my privilege to welcome the praise and worship to take over uh, this session. Welcome. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome.
Hallelujah, you welcome all the spirit. Come and heal us, come and touch us, come and give us your victory. Hallelujah, Touch me once more. Touch me once more. Touch me once more, oh Lord. Touch me once more. Touch me, Lord.
Oh, touch me, 
Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. The Lord is here. Amen. Our God is here. Our Father is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for this session that has just passed. We thank God because we know we are blessed as we participated in praising and worshiping him and we give him glory. I thank the Lord for our praise and worship team. I pray that God will continue blessing them and giving them more revelation about uh, new songs that can uh, continually glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Be blessed. Having said that, I want to pray a short prayer uh, so that we can continue into the next session. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am here to thank you for the past sessions. I've seen you taking us from one uh, level to another. I have a reason to thank you. I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue moving in, in that direction and giving more revelation even through the world. And I pray also for the empowerment through the same Spirit. And I pray that the hearts of people will be ready to receive this word, to transform them, to heal them, to set them free for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So we thank God again. He has given us to come to gather together, to listen to his word that it can give us life, it can give us direction, it can caution us, it can correct us, it can revive us, it can heal us, it can give peace, joy, and many other things beyond our imagination. So, we thank God for that. Last week, we were seeing about the issue of lust and self. We tackle the, 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 the lustful desires and also we tackle self, although the self, it is also wide. We did not exhaust, but we shall continue to explore in it to see what it really means. Last time our main scripture was 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 to the end, where Paul, by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, was shown how transformation will be at the coming of Jesus Christ to rapture the church. And he has given us encouragement through that word that as we work on our salvation by yielding to God and to his spirit we have a better future the mystery the turmoil the wickedness of this world will not uh, be there in the age to come so it is a word of encouragement and why are we learning such a things? Our major topic is about the kingdom of God and its principles. Our main example, our perfect example, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything we do, we need to see it in line with our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the, the intent of his father, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 29, to be in the likeness of his son. Mark that scripture. To be in the likeness. Whatever we do, I, I, uh, I am I doing in the likeness of the son of God, Jesus Christ, if he could have been here to witness what I am doing. Will he have commended me or reproved me? That is our, our perfect example. Anything we do, all issues, all 
activities. We need to sit in the line of, our son, of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. That has to be our goal because we are uh, human beings, but Jesus is God, is so perfect, so he cannot go wrong. That's why we are learning the aspects of the fruit of the Spirit and how they can be effective. To cause you and me to bear fruit in this age and in the age to come. And we saw in detail what it means to die to self. As Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 24, which we read last time, unless a seed falls into the ground and it dies, it remains itself. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. So we have to die to our selfish issues, our selfish intents, the ego, the things that do not glorify Christ. Because God has spoken through many uh, diverse ways the issues of the heart. When we get saved, we invite Jesus as our, uh, our savior in our heart, but is not on the throne of the seat of our heart. Three people can be, one of them can be on the throne, the seat of the throne of your heart. Either the devil or self or Jesus Christ. So when we say Jesus is my Lord and savior, we mean he has taken the throne of our, our seat. He's the one directing us. But when we say he's my savior only, it means we have not given him liberty to be on the throne. We have not yielded our lives. Therefore, it will be very difficult for us to bear much fruit. We need to work hard to make him as Lord of our hearts. That is the place Paul reached and said in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I no, I no longer live. My life I live is the life of Christ in me. Whatever I do, I do according to the dictates of the one who sits on the throne, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. And remember whatever, what Paul went through. In many of his episodes, he, he was the most persecuted apostle, the most eh, tempted and tried and humiliated apostle of that time. But he never renounced Christ. He never renounced to his work. He never repaid evil for evil. As we have read in Romans chapter 12, as we are encouraging ourselves how to live according to the principles of God. He's the one who wrote by the revelation of the Spirit, pray for those who persecute you. Don't revenge. Vengeance belongs to you. Jesus Christ. He's the righteous judge. And live peacefully. That is the principle of the kingdom of God to cause you and me to bear fruit as a believer, as a saint, to reach that level we die to ourselves. We pray for people who persecute us, who oppress us, who mock us, 
who are ridiculous, we love. Love is a powerful tool. When we do that, we find these people will see in us the character of Christ. And one day, they will admire to come to the kingdom of God, be it our, our children, our spouse, our siblings. The character, our character speaks much. That's why we are learning the fruit of the Spirit and how to bear fruit. We need to die to ourselves. We need to really to make sure our immediate family members, our uh, relatives, they see Christ in us. And that's why I encourage you, each one of us, to continue working our salvation with fear and trembling. And I know as we yield to the Holy Spirit, he'll work mightily in us and cause us to do the will of God. So that's what we saw last time. And we continue to see other examples in the episode. Paul wrote Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. Can we go there? Verse 14 says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 15. From whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. If you read the whole of chapter 3, you find Paul confessing or declaring the mystery God gave him about the church of Jesus Christ, which was hidden for many ages before, but it has been revealed in his time. And that revelation, that mystery, is able to be displayed to the principalities, powers of, that, of the day and make the church victorious. Remember, Jesus has a vision for the church. As he has said in Matthew chapter 16, I am building the church and the gates of hell cannot prevail. If you read, you find all that written when Peter was given a revelation about Jesus being the Son of God, and Jesus said, flesh and blood cannot eh, give you such a revelation, but by the Spirit of God, and because of that revelation that you have gotten direct from heaven, on that revelation, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So we learn from there that revelation is a powerful weapon. Anytime you read the word of God by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, anytime you go higher in the revelation, that is the time you defeat the powers of the, the, the day. Because revelation is a powerful tool. That's why we need to pray and veil that hinders us not to get deeper revelation in the word of God to be destroyed by the Holy Spirit. Hmm? People without revelation, they cannot grow. But with the revelation, people grow. So we need to pray God has a revelation for your personal life and revelation grows. That's why we cannot be satisfied with knowing God. You pray today, God brings another dimension. You pray tomorrow, God gives a different. That's why he told Moses, I am who I am. I am revealed at that time you need me. Each person has an experience of God. You see, you can, we can be praying in a congregation. Some are sick. Some do not have jobs. Some, 
they are facing um, uh, powers of wickedness in their marriage, in their homes. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will give the jobless a job. He will heal the sick. He will break the bondages of marriage. Each person will know God according to the revelation through that miracle that he has ministered. Somebody will say, ah, I know Jehovah as my Jehovah Jireh, which is good because he has come. The same congregation, he has come in different manifestation. So each one has an experiential view of God according to how he has tackled this problem. In one meeting, God has manifested in very diverse ways. That is the God we serve. And it does not mean he has finished his manifestation. In another meeting, another issue will come which has never been heard of. Like the issue of tackling Pharaoh. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew God as Almighty. The Almighty God, the, the, the creator of heavens, earth, and the sea, and who can do great miracles. But the issue of Pharaoh did not go, need the aspect of God Almighty. It needed the Lord, the Lord who says, I am who I am. And that name, who I am, tackled the destruction of Pharaoh that time as never before. Which means we serve a mighty God, a God who cannot be revealed in one time. As you walk with him, he reveals to you progressively. The more you pray, the more you uh, seek him, the more he opens revelation to you. So we need our whole life, according to John chapter 17, verse 3, to invest our lives in seeking God and getting deeper revelation. And let me encourage you, when you get that revelation, your attitude will change, your mind will change, you will find you see even opportunities out of a crisis, out of problems. So we need to work hard. People invest their energy in working hard for earthly things, but when it reaches to spiritual things, reading the word, prayer, serving the Lord, we find we are lazy. But God is able to rise, bring a resurrection. Because it is the spiritual first, then the physical. It is the spiritual that transforms the physical. So God will help us as we continue to learn. So verse 15, as we go back to our Bibles, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 15, we had read verse 14. 15 says, From whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We have uh, sometimes ago we, uh, we were learning about the invisible church and the visible church and the universal church. We shall revisit. Verse 16, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. You see, to be strengthened. First strength is in the spirit and the soul. If you are not strengthened in the spirit and the soul, you won't be strengthened. It will be very difficult to be strengthened in the body. Because the spirit and the soul is so powerful, your inner man is who you are. And if you read somewhere in Proverbs, they say, uh, a strong spirit, fortified human spirit, will sustain you in sickness, which means when you have soaked your spirit in the word of God, your soul, there are sicknesses will, uh, that will come in your body, but they will dry themselves because the word of God is destroying them. So that's why it is very important to read the word, to proclaim so that our inner man may be strengthened. And the more you read, even these dreams, dream attackers in the night, molestation, sexually, eating, 
being forced to eat in the dream will be a thing of the past because your inner man is so strong. Because, why am I saying this? The more you continue to see these things, it is an illustration that your inner man is weak. And also, it will be very difficult for you to bear fruit. You shall find you are staying in one place for a long time. You cannot arise. And that is not the will of God. God has prevailed every, has made it accessible, every means for you to come out. You need to work hard. You need to partner with the Holy Spirit because the goal for God, for you and me, is to bear fruit. And bearing fruit, our inner man must be strengthened. 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, verse 18, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height. Verse 19, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. We need to be filled with all the fullness of God. The word of God is the word of Jesus Christ. The more we meditate upon it, the more we read, the more Christ dwells in our hearts. And the more we have the love of Christ. I was telling people somewhere, many people complain. If you find somebody complaining, there's no love in this church. It means he has a problem or she has a problem because love starts from your heart. You have to give people so that they can give you. But you find these people, they need to be given. And they roam from one fellowship to another, seeking to be loved. I was teaching in uh, another forum that Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. So you have to love yourself before you expect your neighbor to love. But many people complain. There is no love in this place. There is no love in this church. They go from one church. You find they have discovered, and it is true from the word of God, these people have a problem. But God loves each one of us. We have to read the word. We have to internalize to know the great depth, the width, the height of the love of Christ. Whether people love us or not, we shall find we love ourselves. We know we are created in the likeness and image of God. Whether people approve what we do or not, if it is in the will of God, approval of God is enough. I repeat, approval of God is enough. Because I find many people complaining, I'm doing this work in this church, in this ministry, nobody is commenting me. Nobody's. You need no commendation. I know it is good for people to comment you, but the first commendation is from our Lord Jesus Christ, who sees in secret, whether people see or not, whether your leaders see or not. And he who sees in secret will reward you in secret. Can you say amen? These are the vital principles that we can use to bear fruit, whether in season or not in season, whether there is opposition or not opposition, because God is above all opposition. Verse 20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above that we ask of or thing according to the power that works in us. This is a very powerful statement. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, number one, abundantly, number two, above all that we ask. All that we ask, all that you ask, God can do above. Or all that you think, you see, you can think according to what the Lord has promised you, but God is encouraging you. He can do beyond your thinking, even if it is in line with his thoughts. Can you see how beautiful God is? 
Can we see how good God is? You think, oh, God has spoken to me. I shall get a good job. And it is true. But God is saying, Huli, do beyond your thinking, which means he will give you a job beyond your expectation. Even if it, it was in line of his, according to the power that works in us. That power that works in you is the power of the Holy Spirit in you and the word that you have soaked in your heart. When you activate the Holy Spirit, it touches the throne of the Almighty. And it downloads things beyond your expectation, beyond your imagination. So the success is in you. It's not in your neighbor. It's not in your friend who has spoken ill upon you. It's not every success to bear fruit or not. The decision comes from your inside. You cannot complain. You cannot murmur. You cannot say you are blocked. The one who is, you, who is in you is greater. Even if you are blocked, he will unblock the blockings and make you to realize your destiny by bearing much fruit. So in the kingdom of God, there is no complaining. There is no murmuring. There is no, nothing to say that I was unable. He has provided everything. Verse 21, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. So, as we have seen, verse, verse 19, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. When I was reading this particular verse, God was ministering to me to know the attributes of God. You cannot bear fruit unless you know the attributes of God. We have the essential attributes of God. The essential means the attributes pertain to God alone. He cannot share with any thing or any being or any substance. Or in other words, non-communicable attributes of God. They belong to him alone. He cannot share. Let me now explain, uh, explain in a statement. The essential attributes of God are those related to God's essence. They are not at all in the relationships to his creatures. They cannot share. These essential attributes can never become attributes of man because man will then become God. That's why these attributes are called incommunicable or non-moral attributes. They cannot be shared with anybody, any power or any other authority, any substance or any created being. They are as follows. Number one, God is eternal. Human beings are not eternal. Nothing is eternal. Everything came from the spiritual womb of God. Everything we see, be it spiritual, be it in the heavens, be it on earth in the sea, came from God. So God is eternal. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth and everything. But God was there before the beginning. So he's eternal. But we are not eternal. Eternal means having no beginning or end. God is there for everlasting. He exists from eternity to eternity. This is very important when we want to bear fruit. We need to know the God we serve. We are not serving a man. 
it will boost our service and the effect of that is that we shall bear much fruit to know whom God we are serving. We shall be more committed to him in season or out of season. Let us read Psalms 90 verse 2 to justify this, this statement. Psalms 90 verse 2 it says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from, even from everlasting to everlasting you are God. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting you are God. When the word says before the mountains, it says before everything. You can say the seas, everything. God was there. He's everlasting. From everlasting to everlasting, he's God. Genesis chapter 21, verse 23. We go there. We want to bear fruit as we know we are serving a God who is eternal. We are better than people who serve human beings, the so-called gods, which are not eternal. So we have to serve with the vigor, with the zeal, with the joy, because we know whom we are serving. Verse 33 says, Then Abraham pla planted a tamarisk tree in Bathsheba, and they are called on the name of the Lord everlasting God. Abraham was moving from one location to another, building altars unto God as God had instructed him to leave his father's household and go to a place he will show him. So by faith he was moving and wherever he reached, he built an altar. But in this place, in that place of Bathsheba, he planted a tamarisk tree and named and called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God, the God who has no beginning or end, which means that altar was strengthened by this name of God who has no beginning or end, which means if there are other gods who do not have beginning or end were destroyed by the, the power in the eternal God. There is power in a name. When you are worshiping as you serve and say, I serve an eternal God. In the spiritual realm, the evil powers hear and flee because they know they are not eternal. They are subject to an eternal God who, whom they owe their existence, but they rebelled. Their, their, their leader rebelled. It is good. It is uh, because as serving, as you serve God, you need to worship Him. You need to praise Him. You cannot serve somebody. You cannot worship. You cannot praise. See, people who serve kings, they give a lot of praise to them. Some bow before those kings so that they can be blessed. It is the same way with our God. We need to declare His eternal God. We need to make sure. The spiritual realm hears that we serve a God who is eternal, uh, an eternal God. He cannot share his, this attribute with others. Let others know they, are, uh, they owe their existence to this eternal God. And let me tell you, you will serve without struggle. No, we, no power of wickedness will prevail upon you because you know whom you serve. And as you do that, you will find you bear much fruit. Can we say amen? Also, Isaiah 44, verse 6. Verse 6 says, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Beside me, there is no God. 
Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Beside me, there is no God. There is no God. You see? He is everything. He is eternal. He has no beginning nor end. He's the first in everything and the last. And that's why we need to serve, to serve him with a zeal. He sees the end from the beginning. Which means when you partner with God, you are starting with God who has already sealed your destiny. He has seen your end from the beginning. You are saying, now I'm beginning with God, but God has already seen the end of your destiny. Whatever will transpire will happen in between. It, it, has, it cannot give him worry anyhow because he's master of a circumstance, whether good or bad. So he cannot tell you, I have seen your beautiful destiny but you'll go a lot of challenges because uh, he knows as human beings we can be discouraged. But he, see, he just tell you the end result. I've seen you, you have reached that desired wonderful end. So continue walking. And you shall realize anytime you reach a challenge, you call upon him and declare what the end, the, the, the end he spoke to you, another power comes. The Holy Spirit raises a standard. We serve a mighty God until you reach your destination. And let me tell you, you shall reach your destination, you shall bear fruit. God cannot lie. So the next uh, verse is Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. Verse 27 says, the eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust, he will thrust, thrust out the enemy from before you, and he will say, destroy. This is a powerful statement. The eternal God is your refuge. Now God is telling Moses and the children of Israel, and underneath are everlasting arms. So anybody saved is under the everlasting arms of God. Other powers may come, but that, those everlasting arms protect you, put a fortress, spiritual fortress around you. And also those everlasting arms, they are powerful to thrust out the enemy from before you and will say destroy. So how can you, the enemy prevail over your life? We have to know the God we serve so that we can bear fruit. Revelation chapter one, verse four and chapter four, verse eight, we read as we conclude, we shall see other attributes another time. Revelation chapter 1 verse 4 says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. You see, who is and who was and who is to come, which means is the same yesterday, today, and forever, as we read in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, you find God also is saying, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He cannot change. He's eternal. Finally, Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, it says, the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, did not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 
Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You see the same statement. With that and many other scriptures, you have to be encouraged, brother, sister, as a church. We have to use this revelation to serve God and to bear fruit as we discover who, we are, uh, who God is so that we can be encouraged, we can be bold to bear fruit and also it can destroy the self in us to know that God wants his kingdom to be expanded, wants people to come to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to pray that God will help us. Remember, I told you about the self. Jesus had to die so that he can bear fruit and he's among the first, first among the brethren or the sons of God. How many, I was uh, telling you last time, just imagine how many Christians truly saved throughout the, the world. Many because of one act the Lord Jesus did. We need to die to ourselves as we learn the ways of God and who he is, his eternal God, so that we can bear fruit. I want to pray with you this short prayer before we take the Holy Communion. And this Holy Communion is a powerful act. Jesus did to die so that humanity can be reconciled to God. So as we, we partake, have that consideration. Lord, help me to die to myself. I need my gift, the gift that you gave me to serve humanity in my generation. I don't want to be accused. I don't want to be judged. I don't want when you are uh, calling each one and giving account, each one giving account to, to be found wanting. Those are the prayers. You have a gift. You are not just in the world or you are not brought to the world to escort others among seven billion people you are so special you have a gift you have to exercise that gift to bear much fruit and by this revelation god is able to change you to bring a transformation the way you have been serving to change so that his kingdom can expand can you say lord jesus Help me by this word, this time. You demand me to bear much fruit in this age. Lord, help me. Where I went wrong, forgive me. I want really to die to myself. My inner man to be strengthened, to know the love of Christ, to read a lot the word of God, to dwell richly so that Christ may dwell richly in my heart, to know the depths, the widths, and height of his, of his uh, revelation, wisdom, and knowledge concerning my, my life and humanity, and how I can use my gift to serve others to the glory of the Lord Jesus. Help me destroy anything that is hindering me. Even as I prepare to partake the Holy Communion, I know much revelation will come. As I have learned also, you are eternal God. Other people who serve the so-called small uh, gods with small g are not gods who created the heavens and earth. Even they are subject to the God I serve. So I am in a better position to serve you and God who can, uh, a God who can protect, who can defend me, who can fight and destroy any hindrance. So I am encouraged. Help me by your spirit to serve you with much zeal and vigor and strength and power of the Holy Spirit. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us read in that consideration, Matthew 26, 26. But uh, pray to God to help you really to serve, to bear fruit. That's why we are celebrating 
the power of the cross where the blood was sacrificed so that we can die the sin that is so hindering us can be destroyed, will be reconciled, and not only be reconciled, but to serve in the kingdom of God. Matthew 26, 26, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take it, this is my body. Verse 27, then he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. Verse 28, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So this is the accomplished work of Jesus Christ. As we partake, start praying in your heart that God will do something to cause you to bear fruit. It is now time to partake of this holy meal, prepare yourself with the bread and the cup and clean your hands as a priest, a leader in your family so that everything can be done in a clean environment because God is a God who desires cleanliness and everything to be done in a very decent way. So we thank God for everything. God is going to minister to you as you prepare and pray. I know you have prepared your people, which is good. So, having done that, I want to pray for the bread and the cup, and you shall lift your bread. I pray that the power of God will prevail. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this bread. As it was that time, you took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave to your disciples, and told them to take it, for that was your body. Pray that you sanctify this body, this bread that will represent the body of Jesus Christ. And as we partake, we shall receive the virtues in the body of Jesus Christ. Also, as we have learned through your word, you demand us to bear fruit, to die to ourselves so that you can be a blessing to humanity by the gift that you have given us. And to know whom, you serve, whom we serve. We have seen through your word that you are eternal. You never change. So it will have strengthened us also to know that we serve a God who is different from the other so-called gods. So as we partake this bread, we shall receive all the virtues in the body of Christ to stir our giftings, to serve you, to bear fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, also you took the cup, blessed it, and gave to the disciples and told them, take it, drink it, all of you from it, for that is the blood, your blood of the new covenant. Let it be so in this, uh, for this cup. I pray that you sanctify it and bless it, that as we partake it, it will be the blood to remove every sin in our hearts, to wash us, to heal us, to set us free and to cause us to have life eternal and also to help us to bear much fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Having done that, take the bread as a leader, priest, break it in pieces according to the number of people that are in your house, wherever you are.
whatever remains you can cover it nicely you can take afterwards or use it another time remember as i always tell you this is now the body of christ it is not to be handled carelessly or in a defiled way it has to be taken carefully as we discern the body of christ also do the same for the cup this is my blood poured out for you and as you drink it remember me this is my blood poured out for you and as you drink it i believe now we are set to take the bread and the cup. So we want first to distribute the bread. Having done that, also take the cup, distribute to each one, as you see me doing in this studio. Let's see, this is my body. So I want now, having prayed over everything, you just take the bread with thanksgiving. Also, take the cup. thank the Lord for what uh, he has done through this holy meal we give glory to him and honor to him father in the name of Jesus I come to you to thank you and bless you for what you have done through this holy communion many things have happened Mine is to give you glory and honor and thanksgiving on behalf of myself and all this congregation. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We thank the Lord for this wonderful session. We bless his name. Now it is time to give our tithe and our offerings and our Thanksgiving, remember these are mandatory according to the word of God. I was telling someone that if you don't give, you complain that I get, say, um, I don't get enough money, you are bringing poverty in your house. 
any time you get that money, remember the tithe. There is no big money or small money. When we are faithful in small, God will also give us more. So be faithful in your tithe and offering, and you, sh you shall see God multiply. We have testimonies from ourselves how God has blessed us when we gave tithe. Uh, by the small amount we are being given, and God worked mightily. We saw provision for everything, even the children at school, the rent, many things. So God is faithful. Don't eat the tithe. It is a curse as God has spoken. So let me pray God will honor that word upon your life as you give uh, this sacrifices. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you bless each one who is giving any form of giving according to your heart. Many promises are in your word of what you can do when we give. And we know them. And we shall still continue to get a deeper revelation. But I pray as we obey each one of those uh, commandments, I know your promises are yes and amen. So bless each one who is giving, sanctify all the offerings and tithes and fast fruit by the blood of Jesus. And let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. You can give through that number on the screen or come to our offices, um, uh, Lower Hill Duplex. Suit 42, you can also give in that or in the office and God will bless you. Having said that, I want you to stand and give, give thanks to God in your own words how God has spoken to you through this service. And he will continue speaking to you by his spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm here to thank you and to bless you the way you have led us in this service from the beginning to the end. I pray the Holy Spirit will continue ministering on these revelations through your word and we shall be uh, blessed in a more uh, greater way throughout the week. As we prepare to meet another Sante, I know you have, you have spoken to each one of us. So bless us, bless our families, bless whatever we do, protect us until we meet next Sunday. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So lift, let us lift our hands to receive the words of benediction from Psalms verse 20, chapter 20, I mean from verse 1 to 3. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Not by might, not by power, by your Spirit, God. Send your Spirit, God.